Hello there, Tom here and welcome to another Wi-Fi Sheep tech video. Um, this one's being recorded on February the 14th, uh, that's uh, the evening of Valentine's Day and yet here I am sitting in a darkened room all on my own. But uh, yes, that's only because my girlfriend works at a, uh, a card shop and as you can imagine card shops have been quite busy selling Valentine's cards right up till about now where the staff have to then stay behind and get all the stock switched over so she's working very very late hence isn't around hence why i'm doing this video right now right what have we got to show well uh, i posted this on i think it was the 8-bit computers group on facebook and was asked to do a video demoing how this worked so this is my bbc master 128 it's an acorn 8-bit computer dating from about 1986. They were last sold in 1994. So what's a late machine for the 8-bit era. And what I have is a Raspberry Pi Copro. Now that is a Raspberry Pi Zero, which is here, and it's attached via this ribbon lead. And that ribbon lead's a 40-pin lead, and that actually goes under the machine in, and is direct pin out straight into a socket called the tube which was a interface port allowing for second processors to be fitted to the BBC micros. They all had them, including the earlier Model Bs. So what I'm going to do is just turn the machine on. Here we are, pretty much a standard uh, twin beat boot for a uh, BBC micro. And as you can see, nothing that special has happened. However, if I now hit the brake key, you'll see it now reads Acorn Tube 6502 64K. What it's now done is the software on the Pi, which uh, just it's just loaded on the SD card. The Pi is being powered purely from the BBC Micro's 40 pin out. And what that's done is that's loaded an emulated 6502 second processor into the BBC Micro, or vice versa. Meaning that the BBC Micro thinks it's now talking to a, a proper 6502 second processor, not an emulator. And that's pretty cool. And what does that mean we can do? Well, technically, it means that we can run second uh, processor software. Most of that was sort of educational or um, business. And yeah, it is because second processors were blooming expensive. But one thing that was made, uh, did a special version of it, uh, was made for the second processor, was Elite, which is the 3D space battling game. And it so happens that I do actually have a really authentic looking copy there we are, can you see that? Yeah. <laughs> and I have attached to the Beast of Micro, excuse me, a modified Amiga uh, three and a quarter inch, it's like it's saying three and a quarter, three and a half inch, 3.5 inch floppy drive. If I put that in there, do shift break on the machine, it will now load from floppy disk And look at the speed that that is running Elite at. So let's just launch. And I can barely remember how to play this. There we are. And you can now fly in a 3D world. And there's not too much slowdown. It's certainly a lot more colourful and a lot faster than the original BBC Micro version. And of course, we've now got, and there's a lot more going on, such as there's another ship flying by, which I can try and attack, and then I'll. All sorts will happen. Oh. And then they all come flying out the space station and get very annoyed at me. Oh, oh dear. Yeah. Anyway, you get the idea with that. So that's Elite running using an emulated coprocessor via Raspberry Pi. But that's not all this can do. Um, let's take that desk out. One of the things that's quite a recent development, and this was on the Stardot forum, uh, was that someone managed to get the full power of a Raspberry Pi Zero, which is its much later ARM chip, um, single core ARM chip, clocked to uh, 1 gigahertz, 1000 megahertz, and they managed to get the full power of that 
to be utilized by an original BBC Micro, which is just amazing and so cool. So what I've done is I've updated the firmware on the SD card. It's a standard Raspberry Pi type firmware, so it's a config file and then boot kernels. Uh, I've just updated that from the zip files that were being shared. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to implement the native CoPro mode. And to do that, I can either switch manually in the config file on the SD card by taking it over to a PC, putting the SD card in, changing the uh, config.txt file, or I can just temporarily reconfigure the Pi by talking to it via the BBC Micro. Now to do that, I need to call an FX command, which is asterisk star FX 151 230, that calls the Pi. And then we say comma, and then we can select what we want. So I want mode 15, enter. Nothing happens, we now press break, and you'll now see it reads ARM 11, 76 coprocessor a thousand megahertz it's now waiting with a star command on the arm processor so that's the native processor of the pi now waiting for instruction from the bbc micro that is amazing so what can we do with that well not an awful lot because it's a bit buggy and rather experimental but one thing we can do is we can load a, a modern version of bbc basic v or bbc basic 5 which was a uh, version used for risk os uh, for the ARM processor. So if we try and run the BASIC and it thinks it's got on uh, ROM, then of course the BASIC on ROM in the machine is designed for 6502. That's going to crash and hang if we try and use it in this mode. So what we need to do is we need to put on an enhanced BASIC. So what I have here is an Amiga disk. I think Amiga users are going to hate me uh, <laughs> reusing all their stuff. But these are uh, cheap magazine disks that I bought a load just loose boxed um, 700k double density floppies which all happen to be uh, old cover discs from the 90s for Amiga and I just wiped them and reused them uh, so what I've got on here is a DFS disc image 200k disc image with the ROM file which I got off the uh, startup forum so we're just going to put that in the floppy and what we'll do is we're just going to ask the cat just to see read the directory there we go and you can see there's a couple of files on there. One of them is bass135. If I type star and bass135, it'll take a few moments. There we go. ARM BBC Basic 5, starting with more bytes than I care to uh, try and read out. And that's now loaded the basic interpreter. So we can now use commands, for example, like wait, which won't do anything on its own. But wait wouldn't work if you were around with the native Basic 2 or Basic 1 that the BBC Micros came fitted in their ROMs. So this is kind of awesome. This means we can run much newer software uh, at ridiculously fast speeds on 30 year old hardware. So you can just imagine the sort of the um, homebrew coding projects you could do with that are just insane. And it's all going to be cross-compatible, or virtually cross-compatible, with the Raspberry Pis running RISC-OS, because the that operating system on the Pi uses Beast Basic 5. So um, it's just like, well, okay. Uh, so let me show you an example of a program that wouldn't normally work on a BBC Micro. Uh, let's just um, have a look at the file directories again. I put on a program here called CIR, or SIR, not SIR as in SIR, CIR, short for circle basically. So I was going to type load CIR. Let's just uh, clear the screen, CLS. Those of you who remember your basic from your um, Commodore 64, Apple II, or um, ZX Spectrum days are going to recognize all these sort of commands. Uh, and let's just do a good old list. So there's this program, which is just to draw random circles on the screen. And line 30, which is circle, and then the random command. So random, uh, you need three coordinates, x, y, and then a, di a diameter, rather. So I've got my coordinates. I'm just asking it to random between 0 and uh, 12,000, 12,300. So it's going to create different um, circles, etc., which is cool. So we should be able to run that now. And it gets so far, and then it gets stuck. And it says mistake at line 30. List the program again, line 30. What's wrong with line 30? 
Watch this. If I use the cursor and the classic BBC Micro copy key, and I'm just going to purely copy 30, enter. I've not changed anything, I've just copied it. Remember, it says it's bad. Oh, now it works. I think it's a bug between a program that's written in uh, BBC Basic 2 and you try to run it in Basic 5, it tries to run it in Basic 2 and doesn't like it until you re-input it in Basic 5 and it does like it. I think there's a slight glitch. So this is quite a new ROM image, so it's still very much in the sort of hobbyist experimental stages. Um, this program is now drawing circles. So the circle command in Basic wasn't there until I think Basic 4. If I remember correctly, someone will correct me on that, but I know for a fact the Boost Micro didn't natively do circles without a lot of mathematics, and uh, you didn't have one command to do it basically. Uh, what we can do with this is at the moment it's running in mode zero, this is the highest resolution mode a Boost Micro can manage. We can't increase the color palette or the resolutions available because that's done by the ULL, ULA chip rather within the micro itself. So we no improvement there. So we're still stuck to a black and white mode for high resolution, which is 640 by 25 something on a BBC Micro. Uh, black and white only, of course. But what we could do is we escape our program. Uh, we'll change line 10, which was the mode. If I go mode, oops, mode V, what am I doing? Mode 2. So that we get the full colour palette and but at a, a reduced resolution so it's the cost of the resolution but we do get more colors on the system which is kind of cool and that's just generally uh, randomly drawing circles uh, which shouldn't be possible on a BBC Micro uh, but you can see just make out the uh, Pi Zero here flashing away like mad trying to run all this so that's kind of cool Okay, let's do a, uh, a system reset. There we go. You'll notice uh, because it's still in the uh, CoPro mode, we need to change the mode to something else. Um, now, this particular BBC Micro was a, or still is, a standard BBC Micro Master 128, which meant it was a stock machine 128K, which is what they came with. There was an advanced version called the Master... 512. Now the 512 had a built-in CoPro, an Intel 8086 I think it was, coprocessor and that allowed it to run DOS. Now through the rig we've got with the Raspberry Pi it is actually possible to run or emulate an Intel processor and run DOS applications which is seriously cool. Now to do that we need to change uh, the emulator again. It's all built on the ROM of the um, SD card that the Pi is booting from. So we simply got to ask it to FX51230, which is our address for the Pi, remember. And this time we're going to ask it for eight, which is Intel. Remember to break, and now you can see it now says 80286, and it's bought over 960K of RAM. Now waiting for an instruction. Let's change disks. Gonna run this disk, labelled as GEM, and you may notice it says ADFS, which I've scribbled on in beautiful handwriting as ever. Um, and I'll tell you what that is in a minute. So let's just put the disk in. Okay, so if we try and load now, or get a directory, let's try cat. It's thinking about it, disk failure. Why is that? Well, the BBC Master had two filing systems for reading floppy disks. It had DFS and ADFS. ADFS stood for Advanced Disk Filing System versus Standard Disk Filing System. So basically, we're in the wrong format. So what we have to do is we have to change over to ADFS. And to do that, we go Control, A, and then Break. It will now automatically read what's in the drive. It says bad command, don't worry about that. You notice it also reads Acorn ADFS now. Let's just, uh, not disk, what am I doing? Let's just catalog. We can now catalog that disk and you see it has a file here called DOSBoot. So I'm simply gonna type DOSBoot. Let's 
and you can see it's now loading digital research digital research rather dos which was an alternative semi-compatible pc dos system uh, to that of ms dos and i've seen a couple of youtube videos of people running this on original ibm pcs or very early um, ibm hardware i've uh, never seen anyone try it on the bbc micro before this is bit a slightly amended version that acorn did to give a dos environment for their BBC Micro hardware. So it's now loaded with an A prompt, so very similar for those of you that know anything about DOS. It's still, I think it's still A drive on Windows if you've got floppy drives installed. So we can simply ask for a DIR command directory and it will now list the PC side or FAT side of the floppy and the files on it. Now, I mentioned GEM. I'm going to swap the disk over. Basically, GEM was a graphical user interface that was a rival to Windows. Um, DRDOS was a rival to MS-DOS, GEM was a rival to Windows. They could actually sort of run each other's applications because it all came from the same kind of place, which is kind of cool. So we're going to put in a second disk because we've got to load multiple um, disks up because we've got no hard drives, we can't call anything from a central disk. And I'm going to, in a moment, type GEM. Those of you from remember um, Windows 3.1 or 95, you may remember typing Win to boot Windows. Well, if I type Gem, this will take a moment. You can hear it working. Wasn't the fastest thing in the world, admittedly. But there we are, it's now loaded Gem Desktop. I've attached to my BBC Micro a Quest Tracker Ball. This was used for an art ROM on earlier BBC Micro machines. Um, this is plugged into the user port on the BBC Micro, which is why I'm having to boot a lot of things off floppy disk, because I do have a uh, an SD card reader which plugs into the user port and allows you to load data off SD card straight into the BBC Micro but obviously if that's needed for a mouse and we need a mouse to use this then we've got to find some other way of putting data in and so we're back to floppy disk. Anyway this is Gem, this is version 2 of Gem which had the uh, crippled desktop and I've just realised you can't really see that so we just make a slight adjustment. So yeah this is the Gem desktop there we are, I hope you can see that a bit better now. I'm sorry about that. Um, this is Gem 2. Gem 1 had a more Mac OS or early Apple system uh, for the Mac feel. And they were sued by Apple and had to cripple their operating system. And Gem 2 was the result, uh, which is what this is. We're running black and white in the mode zero. You know, we talked about that high resolution mode. Uh, Gem really does need to go as high a resolution as the BBC Micro can master. <laughs> which unfortunately is um, still quite low and we lose our full colour ability. You can run colour on the BBC Micro version, but you drop your resolution as a result and then fonts all kind of clog together and it's it looks ugly and your colour, it, you get like four colours, including black or white. It's not really worth it. So I just run it in a high resolution black or white mode. Uh, so I've mentioned the trackpad before. We now have a mouse which can move around and we have things that we can, uh, menus that we can pull down, desktops, we can call things like desktop info, uh, dialogues, 1985, 1986 desktop. Uh, and we have disk drives, so we have AB on disk drive. Really with this, you should be running a twin drive. I'm just running a single floppy drive. So if I double click on B, I will actually crash the um, computer. So A should work fine though. Yes, it does. And you can see there's the directories of the boot disk for A. Uh, up here we have uh, a, uh, direct, a directory, so it's A drive uh, gem apps. And one of the apps is paint.app, which I'm actually going to open. I 
And this will take a moment again. Jen wasn't the fastest OS, especially with loading off um, um, double density floppy. There we go. And we now have a full uh, painting and graphics application. So I've got a paintbrush selected. I've got patterns because I haven't actually got any colours available. And I can then draw and paint what I want. You've got to remember this was this was quite impressive for the time, especially when you could get the uh, colour version to work. And doing this on a BBC Micro at all is quite something. And we've got shapes as well, so perhaps we won't use the uh, dollar. Let's use that instead. And we've got things like we can zoom in. Oh, I've actually got the text tool instead. I didn't mean to do that. There we go. So we can zoom in to do sort of fine work. The pencil tool to do pixel painting. I seem to remember doing stuff like this with um, not Mac Paint, but um, Claris Works Paint back in the 90s on a Macintosh that we had at home. So, um, yeah, it, it has that sort of feel, and we can sort of, we've got menus to so save as, abandon, close, into uh, typefaces, typesets. We can uh, click and put text on the screen. Just get off my menus. There we are. Text that I was trying to do before. Um, we've got fonts as well, which is all really quite impressive. Uh, and then we can save that. Let's bring up paint info. There we go, gem paint. Um, yeah, 1986. So, and it could actually have uh, multiple windowings. You could have two paint files in separate windows open at the same time. And it even does work on uh, the BBC micro versions so I don't we can do this we just no I don't think it's going to uh, let us opening two new files at once but if we had two save files which the only way of doing it would be to have the twin floppy drives is why you need them because one drive would have the application on it and the other drive have the files but I haven't actually put my uh, twin drive on this today so that's why that's not working but uh, it's still very impressive and the fact is we're even able to run this and a Raspberry Pi is doing all the boot work is you know, impressive. So we'll quit. We'll say no to that. Oh, oh abandon image, yes. And we'll go back to the desktop. So there we go. That's a brief demonstration of my Pi Zero assisted BBC Micro co-pro system. Uh, I've been Tom. Thanks so much for watching this video. Uh, we'll have lots more coming up on the Wi-Fi Sheep channel in the near future. Bye for now.